In this lecture, I'll show you how to compute the contours for those two quadratic surfaces that can be written as scalar functions. First, I'm going to show you some um, different ways that those contours are shown on, from these graphing routines. We're going to take this to be a scalar function of two variables. So this is some f of x and y. And I plotted this on dplot. If you want access to dplot, just ask me for it and you can download it and I'll give you the licensing. I bought a license um, for, or acquired a license for all of UAA for a year and you're welcome to use it, but that's what I use to plot these. It's not the best 3D plotting uh, package, but it does, it does um, pretty good. Alright, so here is a picture of the function with the function values. And now you can ask it, you can go into contour options and ask it to produce the contours in two different forms. So here are the contours and they're shown as lines. And instead of labeling them by drawing arrows or putting numbers on them, uh, it's typical to put a scale over here on the side and match up the colors. You see these contours are elliptical. It's a family of nested ellipses. Some routines can display the contours right underneath the figure, like the first one that I showed, but um, not all of them can. Now there's another way that, that these contours are shown, and that's by solid bands. So here's the contours again. They're shown in bands instead of lines, and here's the scale on the side. In the homework, I ask you to go in the other direction. That's to start with the contours, and I show you two pictures of them. One as solid as a colored bands, and the other as lines. And from the scale on the side, you're supposed to try to reconstruct what the image looks like. In fact, they look sort of like this. And you might see on something like this that here's the zero. So you can see numerous places where there's zero. So what you're going to try to do is do some kind of 3D graph here. And I know there's zeros quite a few places. And now these values are, that's interesting, 1.8. Huh? Okay, well these values are positive. The ones down here are negative. So look carefully at the scale. So if this is the x-axis, it looks like you've got up going bumps along the x-axis. Now look as you move in y, those are going more negative, so perhaps you've got dips going in this direction. So you can, the one that I showed you has a whole bunch of um, circles, sort of like this, and all you have to do is kind of get the idea, and if you can't draw any better than this, which is pretty pitiful, you can just describe it in words so you're trying to start with the contours and reconstruct the function. In the first lecture I mentioned that if the domain was R3, then the, the function values are often just shown in color, but the traces are in R3. So here's a function of um, three variables, x, y, and z. Well, actually it should equal something, but it's spherical. So when, um, to find those traces and the contours, you set the function equal to some constant k. And in this case, it turns out to be nested spheres, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is, is, um, is a sphere. And just different values of the k give you the set of nested spheres. So in higher dimension, in, in R3, you don't end up with lines for contours. Instead, you end up with three-dimensional shapes. Here we're seeing spheres. You don't have to do any of this in this class. I just wanted to show you what it would be like. Now, most contour plots are done numerically by computer, especially if you don't have a simple form for the function. But I want to show you how, how they're done. And this will, of course, be for your elliptic um, paraboloid. I want to find the contour expressions. You set the function equal to some constant k. So here is the expression that's often given for that elliptic paraboloid, and you set the z equal to k. So when I put z is equal to k in here, you can see this is an expression for a circle. I could rearrange it to get the standard form. So this is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 
and now I have the standard form for a circle. Each value of k gives me a different radius for this circle. The bigger k's will be bigger circles, of course, and so you have a family of nested circles. So here's just some examples. If k is 1, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I had the, if k is 1, that, well, that worked well. If k is 1, then the radius is 1.5. If k is 4, then the radius is 3. And so that just gives you the contour lines, in this case, are just going to look like circles with the same center, nested circles. Now we'll go through the same exercise, but for the hyperbolic paraboloid. And this is the homework question. But in, this, in the hyperbolic paraboloid for homework, the negative sign is moved. Um, so you can make whatever adjustment you have to. You'll be able to translate this into, into that case. But I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to look at this expression here. I'm going to set z equal to k. And now you can recognize this is the equation for the hyperbola. For simplicity, I'm going to set c equal to 1, which is fine. And I'll get, I can write the equation in standard form. Remember, the standard form for parabola is 1 equals, or hyperbola is x squared over a squared. Well, I should use an alpha, so as not to have confusion, minus y squared over beta squared. In this case, the alpha is ka squared and the beta is kb squared. So as k changes, you get different values here for the hyperbolas, and this, just like the circles, this produces a family of nested hyperbolas. The one thing to notice in this case, though, is that k can be both positive and negative. So if k is positive, then you would have the, the expression is going to look like this. k is a positive number, so in an xy coordinate system, for this case, the parabola opens right and left. But if k is negative, then you could actually use the absolute value of k and factoring out the minus sign, you see that now the negative sign is in front of the x and the positive sign is in front of the y. This is a hyperbola that's opening up and down. You'll have the same thing for the homework problem, only things are going to be reversed a little bit because it starts off with a hyperbola looking in a, in a different direction. So you have two families of nested hyperbolas, some of them going right to left and some of them going up and down. So here's a graph for this hyperbola. So in this case we have z equals x squared over 36 minus y squared over 25. c is equal to 1, it's just a standard equation we've been talking about. Remember the hyperbolic, um, this hyperbolic parabola has this a section here, you can see along, along this axis, that's going up. And then when you look in the other direction, it's going down. This point is the saddle point. And you see now the two sets of hyperbolas are sort of shown here in these solid bands. So when you're greater than zero, here's the zero, you get the hyperbolas that, that are going in this direction. But when you look less than zero, then these hyperbolas are going in the other direction. That's where you get those two sets of hyperbolas. And here are the contours. They've shifted this. If you back up and look at the original picture, which I can't show on two two slides with any accuracy, you'll see the colors are a little bit. Um, you can match up the colors, but you see two sets of parabolas. You see this this one matches with this one. You see this the hyperbolas there are going in this direction, and then you see another set of hyperbolas going in the opposite direction, and that has to do with. Uh, the different parts of the original function. So in the homework problem you'll have essentially the same thing but it might be going in different directions because it starts off with a hyperbola that has a negative sign in front of the x and a positive sign in front of the y. That's a minor point. The idea is that you reduce this to the equations for the hyperbolas and then you note that when k is positive, when z is positive, you have hyperbolas going in one direction. When z is negative, hyperbolas are going in the opposite direction.